Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And it's Wednesday. That means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. On Wednesdays, on Epic Comic Book Wednesdays, we talk about a certain comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. Steve Donahue on his channel will talk about the same comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. It is our world's finest team-up that we do once a week. And this week, Roger and I have a great pick, but we have to do it really quick because we only have 15 minutes to film about. Can we do it? We'll see. We're talking about a great one. We're talking about Marvels, which is a miniseries that was written by Kurt Busiek and painted by Alec Ro Alex Ross. This was an early example of Alex Ross's artwork. At least for many of us, this is the thing that brought Alex Ross to our attention. It tells the story of the beginnings of of the Marvel Universe. And it tells the story from the viewpoint of an ordinary person, Phil Sheldon, who is a photographer. And so we see the beginnings of the Marvel Universe and a lot of the events that we are familiar with if we've read those early issues of Marvel Comics. If you're a Marvel Comics fan who's read all of those early issues of Marvel Comics, you're really gonna love this because it has so many moments from those comic books. And it starts at the very beginning of the Marvel Universe. I normally think of the Marvel Universe as starting with the Fantastic Four, because that's the first Marvel comic book. But of course, it goes back further than that. It goes back to the golden age of comics. And so the beginning of this, at the very beginning of Marvels, we meet the Human Torch, the original Human Torch, who was an android, who was created by this scientist there. There's a scientist at work on the Human Torch, and the Human Torch is, narr is narrating this little bit, talking about his own creation and uh, how he turns into, well, a Human Torch or an android torch. And it's it's great. It is It is just so beautiful. The artwork in this is amazing. One of the interesting things I noticed when I read this again is that this is absolutely beautiful, but his artwork actually improved after this. Kingdom Come, uh, which he did later, I think is artistically better. And a lot of the stuff he's done since is even better than that. Which, which is no slight against this, because this is amazing. It's just interesting that Alex Ross, who is so great, you know, managed to get even better. But this is fantastic, and it begins with a bunch of reporters and our photographer, Phil Sheldon, and he's hanging out with a very young J. Jonah Jameson, when J. Jonah Jameson was just a regular reporter, talking about how one day he's gonna run the Bugle. And our photographer goes to a demonstration of this android, and that's when he sees for the first time the Human Torch, who becomes the first of the Marvels. And Phil Sheldon becomes very interested in superheroes as superheroes begin to appear. And this early section, like I said, takes place in the Golden Age of Comics. And an interesting thing about this is that it doesn't, it doesn't update anything. Everything in here takes place when the original comics were published. So it takes place mostly in the 1960s, which is interesting. Uh, so it takes place in the 1960s and some into the 70s. And this part, of course, takes place in the early days, in the 1940s, where we are introduced to characters like the Human Torch, and so, because like Human Torch, Submariner, who we find, who we see right here, there's a Submariner, and Captain America, of course, they began uh, the the Marvel Universe. But this is really cool. We we get this original battle with uh, the Human Torch and the Submariner, which was like this epic thing that happened back in the Golden Age of comics, which resonates with me more now that I've actually read that stuff. The first time I, re I read this, and when did this come out? I should probably take a look at that. It was 2000 what? I 
can't, I'll put it down below because I the print is just too small and I don't have my glasses on. Anyway, it came out a while ago and I hadn't read those original Golden Age, Golden Age issues yet. But this, like the Submariner who's, you know, threatening humanity like Submariner likes to do and the Human Torch, they were the er our early exposure to superheroes if you lived in Mar the Marvel Universe. And uh, we get some shots from World War II when the Submariner and the Human Torch are in the Invaders. And let me see if I can find the part I'm looking for. So we have this other clash between the Human Torch and the Submariner. And in this part, our photographer gets too close and is hit with a chunk of brick, it looks like, and he loses an eye. And so he is collateral damage. And that's one of the things that you see in this series is the real life cost of living in a world with superheroes. How you would perceive them as an ordinary person. And if you got too close to the battles, what could actually happen to you? You can end up like this guy or worse. Uh, it's really interesting. And so there are a few things that are that are great about it. The artwork is, of course, the obvious thing. It's kind of cool to see, to see all of these events that you are familiar with from the Marvel Universe from this perspective. We're all seeing it from Phil Sheldon's viewpoint, like I said. So here's a brief glimpse of Captain America going into action. But a lot of the other stuff they see that he sees are from street level, you know, as he sees it, mostly from a distance. We do get close-up images of these uh, exciting happenings. And this is one of the most iconic images, this one of Giant Man, who we've talked about recently on Epic Comic Book Wednesdays. But this is just such a great image. How Giant Man would actually appear to you if you existed. Now, this also goes into the X-Men, and you get a really interesting viewpoint of the prejudice against mutants in the Marvel Universe, how they are the ultimate other, and how they are feared by society. And even our man Phil is initially, you know, distrustful of mutants. But there's a very kind of touching scene Will I, do I, can I even find it here? See, if I, I look for these things, I won't be able to find it. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. So, Phil Sheldon runs into this little girl who's a mutant. And he sees, geez, she's just a kid. She's just a little girl who's lost everything, you know, because she's a mutant and she's hunted. And that's a turning point for him. And you can see from this image here, just, you know, how he's realizing the, the unfair prejudice against these people just because, you know, they're different from other people. It's, it's an interesting moment. And we got also all of these great moments from the Marvel Universe, like there's the wedding of Reed Richards. Uh, Reed Richards, who in this series looks just like uh, the doctor from Gilligan's Island. I forget his name, but that's what that's who plays Reed Richards in this uh, in this story. But probably the there's two really great moments in this, and one of the great moments is when Galactus arrives. Of course, that famous Fantastic Four issue where Galactus arrives and fights the Fantastic Four and introduces the arrival of the Silver Surfer, but this really gives you an idea of what that's like for an ordinary person to experience. The arrival of Galactus, and there's Galactus there, just looking fantastic. Uh, Alex Ross is just amazing. And so we get a bunch of scenes from that battle that we are familiar with if we've read those issues. And we also get the perspective of ordinary people who are seeing this, and we get their viewpoints on this whole thing. And it's just wonderful. Uh, just 
a great moment when Galactus arrives. The other fantastic moment involves Gwen Stacy. And the one thing we all know about Gwen Stacy, who makes her appearance here, is about her tragic demise. And this story recounts that. And again, we see a lot of it from the viewpoint of Phil Sheldon as he's looking up at the Green Goblin and Spider-Man in the battle on the bridge. But we also get these fantastic, this fantastic scene of Spider-Man fighting the Green Goblin in this very important moment in Marvel history. And Spider-Man, just look how cool Spider-Man looks. One thing I have to say about this book is that Alex Ross took care to make all of these characters look like real people who are dressed in the costumes of the comic book characters from those issues. So these, these characters look like real people wearing those exact outfits. And it, that's different from the films that we are used to. In the films, every one of them, the costumes have been changed to, to look more cinematic and perhaps a less, less, you know, ridiculous on occasion. But it's because of that that this just really, really works. I mean, look how awesome Spider-Man looks. And that's just like Spider-Man would look if Spider-Man existed in this world. And that's one of the reasons Marvel's is so great. The other is the story. Uh, the story is amazing. This whole thing is just great. It's it's great for anybody to read. But if you're interested in the Marvel Universe and, you, and you've read those original issues that this is referencing, it's extra fantastic. I mean, there's just so many moments in this that are just golden. And, you know, I particularly like this trade paperback I got. What is this one? This is the remastered edition. Now, I got the remastered edition because my original edition was just in tatters. It was embarrassing <laughs> because I just read through it so many times and other people had read it. So I, I, a while ago, I got the remastered edition and uh, it has some really cool extras in the back, other images that Alex Ross painted of these characters and some behind the scenes stuff of him creating this series, including the models that he used. It's just awesome. This is just beautiful. And it's just full of so many great moments and it tells a fantastic story. I can't, I can't recommend this highly enough. This is an incredible book. I'm sure even Steve Donahue will agree with me on this one, that this is an incredible book. I would be surprised if he didn't say so. Uh, it's, it's great. It is, it certainly lives up to its title and I highly, highly recommend it. And now I gotta go to work. I will catch you next time.